Welcome to an all new Tales from the Dork Side. I am Brad Reed. I'm Gog. And we are here today to talk about a few things, some of the mm-hmm. scariest horror movies according to science. Science. They've brought science into it. They have. Are you a believer of science, God? Yeah, I mean, mostly, yeah. Yeah. Most of the time. All right. I believe in like the concept of science. But you still believe like the earth is flat and that kind of well, stuff. Well, I mean, that's science, technically. Yeah, science. Science. Um, <laughs> yeah, you guys know me and my flat earth yes. ideas. <clears throat> he likes his earth like he likes his women. Yep. Flat. That's right. Yeah. So <laughs> uh, we do a recap of Tales from the Dark Side. We do that. Yeah. We, we'll have that coming up in just a few, but... Uh, have you have you watched any good movies lately, Gog? Any anything scary that we're not mentioning here today, but just kind of in general? Oh, um, so are you saying anything like separate from the list? Yeah, yeah, just in general. Just I was I, I like for instance the other day, I didn't get all the way through it, mm-hmm. so I got to finish it. But I was kind of like, Ooh, I don't know. I was watching The Invitation on oh, Netflix, yeah, which looks good, but. I don't know. It's kind of slow. Mm. So. Nope, I haven't seen that one. I saw Violent Night the other day. Oh, yeah. That's, That's a one really I want to see. Yeah, that one's a really good one. That one's a really good one. Yeah. So, no, I did watch a weird Indian movie called RRR. Oh, yeah. Um, it's kind of like a big Bollywood style story. Yeah. yeah. It's cool. Is that on Netflix? It is, yes. Yeah. Netflix has a lot of Indian movies on it, mm-hmm. I noticed. They must yeah. have like a big. Uh, customer base in India, yeah, which is one of the biggest countries. So that would that make would, sense. That would make sense. Um, but so it's pretty good. You would recommend that one? Yeah, I mean, it's not a scary movie, but yeah, you know, if you're looking for something a little different, I watched uh, Banshees of Incher in- in- I don't know how you say it, the last <laughs> in- word. Incherito. In- Banshees of Incherito of Ed Sheeran. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's on HBO Max. Got Colin Farrell. It's not a horror movie, but it's really weird. Yeah, I Ed- dig weird. And it had uh, Colin Farrell, Barry Keegan, who played the Joker, oh, yeah, and the yeah. Batman was in it. Mm-hmm. And he was so good. And so uh, one of the A24 movies um, is called Killing of a Sacred Deer. Mm-hmm. And it also has Colin Farrell and Barry Keegan. Oh, nice. I think Barry Keegan was also in the A24 movie Green Knight, if I remember he correctly. He was. He was. I don't remember him, though, in that movie for some reason. I watched that movie, which that movie is beautiful, uh-huh. spectacularly beautiful, uh-huh. and also maybe a little spectacularly boring. It is. I was a little disappointed. I, I was under the assumption there maybe would be more some like action sequences or. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, you would think. But it was, I mean, it was okay. But yeah. It, if you're like really into slow, slow night movies that you would think would have more action in them, uh-huh. then you'll love it. But, yeah. but like I say, the cinematography was yeah, great. It, it was, was very pretty. Uh, the killing of a sacred deer though, man, it gets weird. Like yeah. all the a 24 movies mm-hmm. do. It gets weird. And I didn't really like afterwards. Cause I mean, I'm no, I'm no dummy. Uh, I've studied some, some film criticism and film school and stuff so i look for like the hidden meanings and all that Mm -hmm. but afterward i was like what was that movie really trying to say (laughs) i'm not exactly sure so if you saw it and you were like oh i know what it was really about then leave us a comment or something but i i was kind of like a little flummoxed yeah it's a good movie though cool barry keegan though that dude is amazing he's a great actor he's a really great actor so I kind of wanted to mention that one. Didn't want to do a whole review on it just because right. I was like, I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. But like, that's the cool thing about the A24 movies is like a lot of them are weird. And some mm. of them you're like, I don't know. Yeah. I don't even know if I liked that one. But the fact of the matter is they're all like conceptually very interesting. Yeah. And not not usually your typical horror movies. Right. So, yeah. But uh, I say we jump into uh, this. What what are some typical horror movies that yeah. we're here to talk about today? Primarily, we're going to talk about the number one scariest movie according to according science. To science. And uh, this was um, this was oh man, I'm looking at the list here and I lost uh, the the name of the people that did it, but. Uh, they were they took like a bunch of people, right? And they set them down and they made them watch hundreds of hours of horror movies. Right. 
And what they did was like the resting heartbeat, the average resting heart rate of the 50 individuals was 65 minutes, 65 beats per minute. Yeah. So they took 50 people. Uh, During Sinister itself, the average jumped to 86 beats per minute, which equates to a 32% increase. Hmm. No other movie saw a higher rise in average BPMs, uh, except for Insidious kind of came in closer because it it had like the largest jump scare, like oh, amongst yeah. all the people, like one scene in particular made them all have like a huge jump scare, mm-hmm. more so <clears throat> than like any time in Sinister, like it peaked. Yeah. But with Sinister, it stayed that, it stayed high longer. Got it. Yeah. So that's why they... Uh, named Sinister, starring Ethan Hawke as the number one, uh, the scariest, movie. scariest movie according the to Jump science. Scares. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> what was it, what was it called? The Science of of Scare. Yeah, the know. Science of Scare. That's that's right. And the one we looked up because there's a few of them out there, but IGN. dot com had this list, so mm-hmm. that's the one we're going off of. Um, I'll I'll read off the list real quick if you'd like. Yeah. At number two was Insidious. Yep. Number three was The Conjuring. <clears throat> yep. Hereditary, a number another uh, A24 movie. Mm-hmm. Paranormal Activity was fifth. It Follows was sixth. I don't remember. Was It Follows at A24 or was it just a weird movie? Oh, I think it was just a weird movie. I love that movie, mm-hmm. though. The Conjuring 2 was seventh. The Babadook, The Descent, and The Visit were eighth, ninth, and tenth. Yeah. So, real quick, before we talk about Sinister, uh, Insidious, great movie. Yes. Uh, I believe there's another one coming out next year. Yeah, they've got, what, like five of them by now? I think I think maybe <laughs> this, this one is one. the fifth one, possibly, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, there's those are some, yeah, I really enjoyed those movies. Yeah, so I, I did cool too. Cool vibe to them and some compelling, scary monster type things popping up. And What's the name of the dad? He's in everything. Oh, he's is it Wilson Dennis <clears throat> or not Dennis Wilson? That he was a beach boy, something <laughs> Wilson, right? Um, I can, look that up. but he was in, um, he's been in several things. Aquaman, the watchman. He was also oh, yeah. in the conjuring movies. So Patrick Wilson, Patrick Wilson. That's it. I like him. Yeah. He's got one of those faces that you're like, okay, who's that guy, whatever he's in. I like it. Uh, but he was also in The Conjuring, which I oh, thought yeah. The Conjuring was a really good movie, the first one. And then the second and third one kind of trailed off for me. Right. Uh, Hereditary, that was a great movie, but I'm <sighs> there was a couple scenes that I thought would be you would consider those scary. Uh, and spoiler alerts, I guess, for anybody who's yeah. watching. Um but like when Homegirl loses her head, that oh yeah, that one wasn't so much scary. Like jump scare, scary yeah, to me though. Gory, it, and it wasn't even. It didn't even seem to be like that gory, but it was just so shocking. Yeah, you know, you don't see kids getting it a lot getting of times. Head, yeah, their head knocked right off. Yeah, well, and it's almost like a, until like some recent time where like that was kind of like a, almost like an unwritten rule where kids don't normally die in the movies. Uh-huh. You know, and you they get, just went full. They went all in. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you look at like it, the the little brother dies and that sets up the movie. And so mm-hmm. it, it happens, but it's just the way that it happened. It was like, it was really hardcore. Yeah. I was like, whoa, wait, uh-huh. what the hell? <laughs> um, and I had to rewind it. Like, let me see that oh, again. Yeah. Uh, and then there's like a scene that I can remember uh, where the son and he, he was awesome in this movie too. Uh, he's in the, um, classroom and he starts kind of daydreaming and i think he starts like smashing his head against the Mm. desk or whatever it's been a minute it's on hbo max now you can watch it on hbo max uh if you really like the a24 movies and you have showtime yeah then showtime carries a bunch of the a24 movies uh paranormal activity man that movie uh came out a little while ago yeah I never really liked the Paranormal Activity movies. No, it wasn't really for me. I, I don't know if it was just the pacing or like the whole like hidden camera. Found footage found type footage, thing. Yeah, which, you know, like the VHS movies are fun. Found right. Footage, but for whatever reason, I had a hard time getting into it. And I think also another part of it was their advertising campaign was like, it's so scary. And, oh, yeah. And you go watch it and you're like, ah, not that scary. Yeah. Um, I think that 
for some people though, maybe it rate rated so high because maybe some people were like, Oh, this is real stuff happening. Uh huh. Yeah. So, you know, people that probably don't watch horror movies all the time, which it doesn't really, at least in that article, it doesn't break down like, you know, the, the people that they have. Right. Right. Uh, and their backgrounds. But if it's something that like you, you don't ever watch horror movies, some people will freak the fuck out at them. Yeah. 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 It's scares, yeah. like legitimately scares the shit out of them. Yeah. And I think a, a big part of that and why some of these are, on this list is, you know, for, from what I kind of understand, it seems like demonic possession stuff right. always scares the shit out of people. Yeah. Oh, for me, the same, though. Yeah. For me, the same. Um, we'll talk about maybe some other movies that we thought should have been on this list here in a little uh -huh. while, but one of them definitely is a demonic possession movie. Yeah. And then anything that's kind of like could happen to you. Yeah. I think that also scares people because it's, it's easier to relate to something. When you could see yourself in the in the situation. Now it follows. I I've only seen it like maybe once or twice, mm -hmm. but I thought it was a great horror movie, and especially at the time because it came out in a time where we were getting you know all the remakes and everything, and so uh -huh. th this one was kind of a um, a different path. Yeah, um, I saw that one in the theater though. It follows. And uh, really enjoyed it. It was kind of like a STD that came to life. <laughs> yeah. It was following people around. Right. Uh, but but I don't remember it being like real like jump scare scary. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, the Descent. I kind of remember that one, but don't a whole lot. I'm I'm assuming that's about a cave. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the Babadook. Yeah. I, again, I love the Babadook. Thought that was a great uh -huh. movie. But that one was more of a a thinker because you had to like decide is is any of this stuff really happening or right. is it all in their head? Uh huh. So it was a good movie. Yeah. I just it, didn't remember it being terrifying. Right. No, it had some cool imagery and everything with the monsters and everything like that. But And then the visit. The visit with um it it was a uh, M Night Shyamalan movie. Mm -hmm. I love that movie. It was another one of those kind of found footage movies, though. But I thought that they did it really great. Yeah, and then has an a, a really awesome twist at the end, like one that I was like, I didn't see that coming. Shyamalan, ding dong. Yeah, and M Night Shyamalan, that's what he does. Sometimes you know his twists don't like pay off that great to me. Yeah. But on The Visit, I highly recommend that movie because yeah. I thought that one was super, super good. Uh, but we did want to kind of talk about in in depth Sinister. Yes. We both watched it the other day. Uh -huh. The other day. The other day. I really enjoyed it. Do you watch Letterkenny? Uh, yes. I've seen the first like three or four seasons. Oh, well, they have a new ep the new season. The, oh, other nice. day. the other day. It the came other day. Out. Uh, but uh, yeah, so uh, Sinister. Man, I saw that movie when it first came out. Yeah, I don't think I had seen it before. And didn't you tell me that the guy who directed Sinister also directed The Black Phone, which came out this year? Yes. And also starred Ethan Hawke? Correct. So uh, as I was watching, because, spoilers, Sinister is about a writer. He's a true crime writer mm -hmm. who takes his family and basically <laughs> he has a habit of moving into like this the towns or whatever and, uh, you know, investigating whatever true crime that he's writing about. The police obviously aren't into this. They, they don't like it because no. I think it assumes that they probably missed something or, or you know. Yeah, it's kind of like putting them down. Yeah, it makes them look bad. And so they're, they're not a big fan of his. And, uh, and that is the case when they move into this town. So his family's already kind of like, man, we, we left a place that we had actually, we knew people. We, mm -hmm. we were... You know, we loved living there. And uh, so they're not happy already about this move. Yeah. The wife is trying to be supportive. And Ethan Hawke's character is like kind of a dick, I think. Like he kind of yeah. comes off as a dick. Like he doesn't really care. Like, yeah. And he hasn't told him, spoiler alerts, but he hasn't told him that uh, the house that they're moving into was where the murder had taken place. Yeah. yeah now, she kind of brought up like, you didn't move us like two houses down from yeah. the murder house. And he's like, nope. No, I swear I, I didn't do that. I just moved us into the actual murder house. Yeah, yeah. Which he doesn't tell her that part nope. until later she finds out. And then, mm -hmm. of course, she's obviously upset. Yeah. Um, I myself, would you would you want to live in a murder house? 
I would say probably not. Mm -hmm. I'd like maybe like spend the night in one. Yeah. Just like spend an evening. But I feel like, I don't know. It would just kind of be a weird vibe. One time me and my wife, we we were looking at houses. And uh, this was right next to the state capitol down there. Mm -hmm. And it was a nice house. It was, a you know, I actually kind of sad that we didn't get a chance to live there. Because yeah. it was cool. But, but... Uh, my wife had told me a story about it right before we went to see it. And apparently, so there's like this room upstairs and it's got like a little hidden room off, room off of it. Well, apparently there's like this guy who was a pimp yep. and, and he lived there and he killed one of his ladies. Yikes. And kept her in that room. Yep. And my wife told me and I was like, now see, I don't really believe in ghosts. Like no. I've been on, um, I used to be on a team that like investigated haunted houses and stuff. And right. like a lot of times, just to be real honest, like I would go because I like to go to old houses and see them. Yeah. You know, uh, got to go to like places like the Lindsay Murray mansion and like all, all these really, I saw like this really palatial mansion up in tall or not as outside of Tulsa, like, mm -hmm. you know, that area and just amazing places that I've got to see, but I never really ever found anything that made me believe in ghosts. Right. But, when we go to see this house, I'm kind of looking around. I'm like, okay, let's just say Jen has to work late and it's 10 o'clock at night and mm -hmm. I'm in this house and it gets spooky. <laughs> I'm not going to want to live here. No. I'm not going to want to live here knowing what's happened upstairs. Right. So I was just kind of like, uh, you know, I, I think we'll pass on this one, Jen. Yeah. And she's like, yeah, let's do Cause we, you know, we look, it was cool though. Cool basement, all of that. Mm -hmm. Like it was cool. So we go to try to get out the back door and the back door locks from the back, from oh. the outside. And we are literally locked into this house. Oh no. Yeah. So like, we are like kind of panicking a little bit. Yeah. Like this is weird. And like, uh, she calls the lady who had, cause the lady had unlocked the back door for us to go in and look at it uh -huh. after hours. Yeah, so she had to call her and like, where? How do we get out of here? I think she had to actually come up and oh, unlock no. it and let us out. And yeah, we were like, you know what? No on this house. Yeah, no on no, this thanks. house. So, uh, have you ever lived in a house that you kind of thought maybe something weird is going on? Like, no, I remember like I would have dreams about like haunted houses. Mm -hmm. like, my, my parents' friends. They live in Dallas, and they had a really big house, and it was a cool house, but yeah. it was just kind of, you know, you know how it's like some older houses are just kind of eerie? Yeah. So this was that kind of house. So I would have nightmares. Like, we'd go and stay with them sometimes, and I'd have nightmares about that house being haunted. Yeah. Ghosts and stuff when I was a little kid, and then my grandmother's house, she lived kind of over by the Capitol, mm -hmm. um, and it was a huge house, and she had this painting of the Virgin Mary that was just very, like, somber looking yeah and it scared the shit out of me to the point where that when we would go visit her uh my parents would have to take the painting down right because it was in the stairwell and i would just it just scared the shit out of me for some reason um we lived in a house that actually you know it's so weird like that area that we're talking about mm -hmm. we looked at a couple of other houses we looked at one on uh 36 no 39th street and classen mm-hmm and when we went in, we went upstairs and I opened the door and like in the closet, they've got like a, it looked like voodoo or something like this, oh, yeah. th this voodoo thing, like written, like in a circle and like a symbol, you mm -hmm. know, and that kind of weirded me out. It's yeah. like, I like, again, I don't believe in ghosts, but I don't really want to live in a place where people are doing all their, you know, conjuring. Yeah. <laughs> and then when we moved in this house on Gatewood, when I, uh. This one though, there, there's like no like if if I'd have found out a whole family had been murdered in it, I was gonna take it because I love this house. Oh yeah, and we did. We moved in, but when we moved in, you know those like little ceramic eyes mm -hmm. that like are supposed to ward off evil spirits. Oh yeah, they had them on the inside of the doors. Oh, and yeah, so I was like, oh god. <laughs> so we lived in that house for a little while, and uh, one morning Jen had told me, okay, like some people were supposed to come by to look at the AC in the basement or something in the basement, like mm -hmm. a heater or something. I was like, okay, cool. So I wake up and I hear like somebody down there moving around boxes and stuff. I was like, okay, they're down there working. So I called Jen. I'm like, hey, I guess they're here. She's like, oh, okay, cool. 
So uh, I go downstairs, just kind of check some stuff out. There's no one in the basement. Oh, that's weird. There's no one in the house. Nobody whatsoever. Yeah. And uh, that was a mystery to me. I was, I'm, <laughs> I'm still to this day like, I don't know what that I was. Know what that was. I'm sure there was some kind of real explanation. Sure. But anyway, so, and then there's other houses that were just kind of, I don't know, like this house I live in now, when I first moved into it, because like multi-level houses, like if it's got like a, you know, two story or whatever, uh-huh. kind of creep me out. I don't know why. It's yeah. just too much space. Yeah. And so this <laughs> one's like. It's built into a hill, and mm-hmm. so there's three levels. Right. And I was like, I really hope this one doesn't give me any weird vibes. And it doesn't. Like, never never one time got a weird vibe in this house yeah. at all. The only scared thing that's happened was I came out here into the studio one day, and there was a freaking snake Ooh. on the ground. And I was like, uh, I don't do snakes. No. So I called uh, my son Jonah. He was uh-huh. staying with us at the time. I was like, Jonah, can you come get this snake out? And then for like six months afterwards, I was kind of freaked just out. Just looking for snakes. Yeah. I haven't seen any come back, but just yeah. in case. In case you feel something go against your leg. Yeah. That's a snake. All right. <laughs> so. I'll keep that in mind. Anyway, uh, that's a, you know, just a little bit about our our own personal history. But yeah. uh, Sinister wasn't necessarily about a haunted house. It's just that a terrible thing had happened there. Uh-huh. But there was also... Something that had happened in other decades, too, mm. to other families. Right. And he had, like, I'm not exactly sure. How did he end up getting the videos? Did they just appear? They were in the box in the attic. Yeah. Yeah. And so that was the thing, because like, I, that's what I didn't understand, was he talks to the cop. He's like, you know, maybe I'll find something that could turn this case around, because some of the kids were killed, and one of the ch- children was still missing. Yeah. They had never found her. And... um the cop was like, no, we, you know, we left all stones, uh, you know, no stone stones were left unturned or whatever, you know, however uh-huh. that saying goes. But, but then he finds this video of really damning evidence up in the, so I have a feeling that maybe it wasn't always there, but maybe our, yeah. our villain, because the villain is the kids call him Mr. Boogie, Mr. Boogie. Which is actually Gog's nickname for when he goes to the clubs and yeah. stuff. Yep. That I don't. <clears throat> I, I that was before Sinister, though. I think, <laughs> right? Like, yeah, they stole a name from me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but he was. Uh, but he was. Um, they were thinking he was a demon, right. right? But the kids called him, and don't say it. Just, just one, maybe one more time out here, yeah. Mister Boogie. We don't want to say it too many times. Yeah, you don't want him showing up. Yeah. But uh, Mister Boogie, that's three, does show up. <laughs> In these videos, mm-hmm. and he'll see them in the background as like these horrible things are taking place. Yeah, and so like yeah, it's weirding him out, and he's drinking a little bit more. Yeah, and some stuff like there, there, there were some great jump scares in this movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't think Sinister. If you ask me, what's the scariest movie of all time? I probably wouldn't say Sinister, but there really were some really good ones. Uh, I think the one of the big First ones was he's like going downstairs and you start to see like like this ghost girl like right beside his face. Yeah. Um also his son has night terrors. Right. And so like they find him like in a box and yeah. he's all like contorted and yeah, yeah. And so you're starting to wonder, like, is the house having an effect on his kids and everything like that? Now the kids, because of what their dad does. They, uh, you know, they they don't feel like they're the most liked kids at schools and all that too. Yeah. So they've got like a little bit of a, you know, uh, I don't know what what the word is, but but it's it, this lifestyle that he's chosen is affecting his kids negatively already. Yeah, and then we have to basically once you know you start getting closer to the end and stuff, you find out that these kids are haunting the house basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like um, it basically follows from one house to the next. Mm-hmm. Like as somebody moves from one house to the next house, that activates right. Mr. Boogie. Because they end up leaving. They end up going back to their, their home wherever mm-hmm. they had left and selling that house, and it follows them there. Yeah. Including the uh, the videos, which either got moved in the move somehow, he thought. Mm-hmm. Well, he, he had burned, burned them. them. Yeah, he burned them. See, that's why I'm thinking they like supernaturally <laughs> appear. Yeah. Which is weird. It is. So, 
Uh, he's he's watching the videos. He's trying to like you know solve this crime. But my one of my big questions was like, why doesn't that dude ever flip on a fucking light? <laughs> yeah, that's a very dark movie. <laughs> like anytime something happens, he's like scrambling around in the dark, and I'm like, hell yeah, to the no. Yeah, it was very dark because I was watching it during the day, and I ended up having to put up like a sheet over the blinds. Yeah, because I couldn't see shit. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, like I I was just. That dude had more balls than me because yeah. if that kind of stuff was going on at my house. I'd be like, we're out of here. Yeah, I would have woke up my wife. I'd have been like, look at this shit. Like, yeah. you will not believe that. Um, one thing, uh, I called you or I texted you during the movie and uh, to see if you had seen it yet. Mm-hmm. And I was wondering, although I'm not sold on this theory at all, but the face that he sees of Mr. Boogie yeah. looks a whole lot like that mask from right. uh, the black phone. Yeah. And of course, Ethan Hawke plays similar. a character from the seventies who's kidnapping and, you know, hurting children. Mm-hmm. You think that there's any kind of like um, loose maybe, but any kind of connection in these Possibly. stories? I'd have to watch the black yeah. phone again. Right. But I wonder if, like, maybe the director or whatever is kind of like, hee hee, it's a yeah. little, you know, there's there's some... Some elements of connectedness. Kind of, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's something that we'll look into a little bit more. And sure. Then, and for, if you guys out there listening know anything about that yes. a theory, feel yeah. free to share it with us. We'd love to hear what your ideas are. Yeah. I just wonder, because that mask yeah. looked a lot... Could just be because it's the same director, and yeah. he, he thinks that mask, that kind of style looks scary, but... The Mr. Boogie and and that, yeah. So by the end, Ethan Hawke, uh, spoilers for the ending, but mm-hmm. his daughter ends up being possessed or whatever Yeah, by Mr. Boogie. Mr. Boogie. But I did think um, that the jump between the movie and then that ending where she's the one kind of like came out of nowhere. Mm, yeah. What do you think? Yeah. A little bit, because they they see in I think it's in there is it a mirror or a painting or something mm-hmm. that Mister Boogie's in with all the previous children, mm-hmm. and then she just like kind of walks into the picture with everybody. Yeah, it's like, and maybe they did it on purpose to so you wouldn't figure this uh, for the end, but it almost seems like it would have been the son because he was the one having all the problems. Yeah, and again, maybe they were like, well, that's too obvious. Let's make it the daughter. Mm-hmm. But yeah, and then so she basically, um, does she kill Ethan Hawke at the end? I think she, it yeah. wasn't on camera, but it looked like she chopped his head off or something. Yes. Yeah. And then goes and joins the children. Right. So. Yeah. Murdered the whole family. And- so, okay. So after watching the movie again, um, where do you place it amongst the scariest according to science. science i mean it wasn't the scariest and you know i also had to like kind of take into consideration like i don't know the environment that these people were in i'm sure they're probably in a dark room you know maybe yeah. like more of a theater setting i was just watching it on tv at my house during the day when i had to put a blanket up <laughs> right because i couldn't see shit so i don't know if like maybe being more immersed in the experience would make it more terrifying you know what i mean right right um but you know, I thought there was some good creepy parts to it, for mm-hmm. sure. And, you know, all the smut films, essentially, those were pretty disturbing to yeah, watch. Yeah, they were. Which I, I thought the, like, the hanging one was really cool looking. Like, it just yeah. visually looked cool. I know it's gross that it's a bunch of people hanging, but. Yeah, well, yeah. It, well, it starts the movie off with that. Mm-hmm. And so oh, yeah, you're, yeah. You're like, oh, shit. <laughs> what the fuck's this going on? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for on my rewatch, because like I said, I watched it a long time ago uh-huh. when it first came out and was not impressed. Yeah, it was okay, but uh, on the rewatch, I thought this is a good movie, and there's definitely, definitely some jump scares in mm-hmm. it. Uh, I think if it were me though, I would probably put like The Conjuring, because like the end of The Conjuring had a pretty good one. Insidious, yeah. Insidious also had a good. Like when he at when he goes to save his son, he has to go into that other world or whatever. Oh, yeah. But I don't know. I don't know. The thing that I noticed about this list too, 
was they said that they watched hundreds of hours. Uh huh. So I'd love to know like all the other movies that they did watch. Yeah. Well, that's on this list that I found. It goes to twenty instead of ten. Mm. And it's got it on there. Let's see. The Ring, A Quiet Place, Nightmare on Elm Street, Halloween, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, yeah. 28 Days Later. Good one. The Exorcist, Hush. Which I feel like I've seen that movie, but I don't really remember. I didn't see Hush. It and Scream. So it's still like pretty much just like your typical. Yeah. More well-known horror movies. And then they had a couple of like the older ones, but it seems like a lot of them are kind of newer. Well, and is that new? Is that kind of like a newer subgenre? Because like, man, there's so many subgenres of horror now that like we do a horror podcast and like some of them, I'm like, I don't know what that is. Yeah. Some of them are like foreign. Like, is it Jella or there's something giallo or something like that like some kind of i believe it's like an italian type horror oh, movie yeah. now that i'm like i don't, don't know what that is but uh is the jump scare like specifically the jump scares kind of more cuz think about mm-hmm. back in the day you know psycho was a huge scary movie but it wasn't like jump scary it yeah. was more drama and suspense right and again like halloween was on that list mm mm-hmm. And it does have some jump scares, but again, it was more like, especially the first one, the, yeah. the, they got gorier as they went, but like right. the first one was very much kind of based on suspense. Mm-hmm. So maybe that's kind of like why the, the list is populated with newer movies. Cause that's what they're trying to do is like really incorporate jump mm-hmm. scares. I yeah. felt like. Because, again, Sinister really did have some good jump scares. Yeah, for sure. I'm not, like, totally sold on, like, my favorite horror movies don't always have, like, intentional jump scares. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I feel like in certain situations, it can almost take you out of it if it's, like, obvious that they put it in there. Yeah. Just for, like, the sake of having one, like, you know. It's like pinch harmonics on the guitar. Yeah. (laughs) You'll see, like, all of a sudden a cat will run by. and Yeah. Yeah, I like that. I like sometimes when they do the, you think there's going to be a jump scare and then there's not. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, you got to put some jump scares in, but Mm -hmm. you're right. Like, I feel like some movies definitely, they play to that uh, real hard. Yeah. And then my favorite don't always do that. Like make them count when you're going to use them. Not just like, yeah. How many jump scares can we get in? Yeah. To one movie. Cause, uh, if you ask me like, what are the most terrifying movies? And scariest, I, I mean, and I'm not going by science. I'm just going by emotion, I yeah. guess. But, um, like, they are, like you had mentioned before, like the demon possession movies mm-hmm. get me more than any of them. Yeah. Uh, and it's, I don't, I don't know if it's just because I grew up Southern Baptist and so angels yeah. and demons and all that. Like, oh, yeah. you know, they're, they're very much a part. You believe in them. Right. Grow, like, I don't personally believe in demons anymore yeah but growing up i sure did and they kind of right. scared me because like there could be a demon right here right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, uh but and th- and that was the other thing like my mom let me watch horror movies but if i tried to bring the exorcist in to watch uh, it nope she'd be like no not in my house like there's definitely like a, a christian thing where they feel like those movies will bring yeah, he's going to open a gateway or yeah, something. Yeah. yeah. And so, like, by the time I watched Exorcist as a grown man, I was like, oh, well, this is just a dope movie, actually. This yeah. is a really good movie. But The Exorcism of Emily Rose. Oh, yeah. That movie actually terrified me, man. Yeah, it's scary. Uh, and you know why? You you want to know why I think one of the biggest reasons that movie was successful and being actually scary? What's that? Uh, the, the practical effects. Oh, yeah. Like, I can't remember the name of the lady, but she was on Dexter. Right. She starred in this movie. Uh, She would contort herself in ways, like, she looked like a pretzel and stuff. Uh, Yeah. And I get, you know what? If I woke up, because in the movie, they weren't sure if she was, like, possessed or just having seizures or whatever. Yeah. But if I woke up and my lady friend was all, like, in a pretzel like that, I'd be terrified as fuck. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I'd pee myself. I'd be like, I don't know what to do. Yeah. I'd be like, I love you, girl, 
but you got to go. Yeah. You got to go. Um, I can't do this anymore. Yeah. So, and I actually, I did. When that movie came out, I was living alone. I was living single. Uh-huh. The single life. <laughs> In an apartment. And, like, the night that I watched that movie and for several nights afterward, because if you watch the movie, this is like a running theme, I would wake up and I would be like, I don't even want to look at the fucking clock, man. I'd look over yep. at 3 a.m., mm -hmm. just like in the movie. Which in the movie, it's supposed to be like the opposite of when Jesus died. Like supposedly oh, Jesus yeah. died at 3 p.m. in the afternoon. Got it. So 3 a.m. in the in the uh, after midnight is like the demon time. Mm -hmm. And so I would wake up every night. I'm like, fuck. Mm -hmm. So like I was seeing this girl that I wasn't like, I didn't even really like her that much. Oh, yeah. Like, I don't even know why we were dating, but. Uh, and I made the mistake of like, hey, why don't you just come stay with me? <laughs> and so she ended up moving in for oh, no. a little bit just because I didn't want to wake up by myself at 3 a.m. every morning yeah. and be terrified. That's funny. So, uh, but I'm trying to think, like, are, are there any other movies that weren't on the list that like you can think of that were like terrifying to you? I don't know. I probably should have thought about this harder before. Well, because... the thing is, like, that's the thing, though. When you love horror movies like we do, and you've mm -hmm. watched so many, you don't get terrified. No, not anymore. Like, I'm sure, like when I was younger, there would be stuff that I'd watch that would, you know, give yeah. me nightmares or, yeah. or or things like that. But I've just always been so drawn to like the darkness. Yeah. yeah. Well, and then like what we talked about last week is you get like horror movies with comedy sequels or oh yeah, you know. Uh, I think that we tend to like fun movies too, like. Mm -hmm. Like Terrifier, like, like we're talking about terrifying. Terrifier, yeah, would be a terrifying movie. If possibly you were young and you thought, you know, oh, that's scary. That yeah, yeah. that clown's scary. Now we're not going to be scared by that because we know. I mean, if a, you know, honestly, if a scary clown popped up, I'd probably be like, oh, cool. Yeah, like you know, there is some magic in this world. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, and I think another thing. This is something I was kind of thinking about too. Is you and I are both really interested in how movies are made. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I feel like to a certain degree that takes away some of that element because we know that it's either practical effects or CG. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for people that don't really know how movies are made, um, it might be a little bit freakier to see yeah. stuff like that. Like, what's yeah. wrong with people? But I definitely think kind of like in the public, the possession movies are probably, probably the most scary. And mm -hmm. then maybe like serial killer. Yeah, and maybe Something that's that why could people potentially happen to you. Yeah, that's why I think a lot of people are are drawn to serial killers or you know like the podcasts and all that is because mm -hmm. that's like that could be the dude next door, right? Which is terrifying. Yeah, that is. Whereas Freddy or Michael Myers or stuff like that, I don't know. You're not really thinking that's they're gonna follow me home. Yeah. So, um, it follows. STDs are scary. Yeah, no. that's scary. <laughs> My junk falling off. Yeah, so that's a that's kind of where I am. Like, yeah, I thought The Conjuring was a good one on that list, mm -hmm. and Insidious, but I I wouldn't have put Sinister at the top. But it, but this is science. Yeah, it's science. So yeah, how, you can't refute it if it's science. Yeah, you can't. Are there any like just um, off the top of our heads like? Are there any science-based horror movies that you can think of? Like, the one that stands out to me the most, and I told you this the other day because it's one of my favorites, would uh -huh. be, like, The Thing. Yeah. There's The Thing. There's Reanimator. Oh, yeah. So, I love that one. That's I, a good science -y. I didn't watch Reanimator till like, later on in life mm -hmm. either, and then when I saw it, I was like, that one's dope. Yeah. But, yeah, see, in some of those, like, The Thing, I think that one could be a good scary one because... It's got a lot of suspense. Mm -hmm. um, you could almost think, okay, well, if I went to Antarctica, there could be like some kind of crazy life force or whatever, <laughs> you know, some kind of thing that we've never discovered. Uh -huh. it's I kind think of a fear of the unknown. I think the idea was wasn't the thing an alien. I'm not sure. I haven't seen it. You never seen it? I haven't seen it. <sighs> So maybe we'll have to watch that one for our next episode. That one is going to be on the next episode. Okay. The Very thing. Good. I love it. It's so good. They made a remake of it. Yeah. Eh. 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 But the <laughs> thing. And again, John Carpenter, he does like science, sci-fi type movies too. Mm -hmm. 
into his horror. Like they live. Did you see that one with a uh, Rowdy Roddy Piper? <laughs> oh, I think so. That's the one where uh, he has the gl- the special glasses where he can see. Like everybody oh, yeah. looks normal from the outside, but some people oh, yeah, have yeah. been taken over by like, like aliens. aliens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that 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 might be what we delve into for the next show: sci-fi type uh-huh. horror movies. We'll continue the science, yeah, theme because it's science. It's science. You can't argue with science. Yeah. No, I'm down for that. All right. Cool. <laughs>